Get your free copy of the complete tutorial at www.teachucomp.com forward slash free. On the Colors and Lines tab of the Format Picture dialog box, if you want to change the fill color, you can select the Color drop-down at the top of the dialog box in the Fill section. You can then click on the color that you want to apply from the list of colors. In the 2003 and XP versions, you can also use the Transparency slider to set the level of transparency for the color that you desire, if you wanted to make a semi-transparent color. Now in 2097, this option was simply a checkbox, and you could check it to make the color semi-transparent. You can click Cancel to close the dialog box without making the change permanent if you dislike it. Otherwise, you can simply choose OK to approve any changes that you've made. Notice that the Fill Color drop-down also has more than a few color choices on it. It also has commands that you can use to create an even better looking background for your text than a plain solid color. So let's look at what we can change as far as the background of our clip art. It's very handy to know this as we'll also be able to apply these color choices to rectangles, circles, squares, and almost any other type of object that can be filled with a color. It's also very handy when you learn that this feature is the same throughout the Microsoft Office applications. So how you change the color in Word is the same way that you can change it in PowerPoint and Excel and so on. Now if you select the No Fill option, that makes the background of the selected object transparent, and you would use this, not white, to achieve a see-through effect. In the middle of the drop-down, we have the standard set of colors from which we can choose. If you hold your mouse pointer over a color, it will display its name in a little yellow screen tip. However, sometimes we want to select a color that isn't in this set, a very particular color. In that case, you can simply click the More Colors command to launch the Colors dialog box in yet another window. There are two tabs in this dialog box, Standard and Custom. If you click the Standard tab, you'll see a honeycomb of colors, as well as some shades of black and gray along the bottom. You can select any of these colors. There's also a Custom tab. If you click there, you can create almost any color imaginable. You simply slide the black arrow at the right side of the rainbow gradient to the desired hue that you want. Then click and drag your mouse pointer around in the rainbow gradient to move it through the colors. You'll see the color choice that you're making in the New section at the lower right corner of the dialog box, and your current color choice is the one listed below that. Now when you're done selecting your custom color, click OK to return to the Colors and Lines tab of the Format dialog box, where you can again click OK to apply your color choice. Also, in the future, if you need to use that color again, it will be located on the Colors and Lines tab from the color drop-down in its own separate section, so you don't have to create it every single time you'd like to use it. Now notice that another choice you could make from the color drop-down in the Fill section of the Colors and Lines tab of the Format Picture dialog box is Fill Effects. If you select that choice, you'll be presented with the Fill Effects dialog box. And Fill Effects are simply fancier background choices that allow you more customization of the fill color for your selected object. There are four types of fill effects that allow you to apply the four different available fill effects, such as gradients, textures, patterns, and pictures. If you click the Gradient tab, you can see that here we can set a gradient as our fill color for the selected object. At the top of this tab, in the Colors section, you can either select a one color, two colors, or a preset gradient. If you select one color, then you have to select a color from the drop-down that appears to the right, and then select whether to mix it with black or white from the black and white slider that appears. If you select two colors, then you have to use the drop-downs that appear to the right to select which two colors you would like to mix. If you choose Preset, 
Then you must select one of the many presets that come installed with Word. In 2003 and XP, you can also create a gradient transparency effect from one side of the gradient to the other by using the From and To sliders in the Transparency section. So from 0% transparent to 100% transparent, for example. After selecting what type of gradient to create, you then have to select a shading style from the many listed in the lower left corner. Then you have to select a specific variant of that style from the ones listed in the variant section. You should see your choice shown in the sample in the lower right corner of that dialog box. You could also select the texture tab up at the top and use one of the preset textures as the fill for the selected object. Just click on the texture that you want to select as the fill effect for the selected object. If you click the Pattern tab, you should select which two colors you would like as the foreground and the background color first. Then select the pattern you want to use as the fill from the listing of patterns at the top of the tab. Once again, you should see your choice in the sample in the lower right corner. On the Picture tab, you can click the Select Picture Command button to bring up the Select Picture dialog box. In here, you can use the Look-In drop-down to navigate to the picture that you would like to use as the background of your object. Then click Insert, and you'll see it in the Picture tab. Click OK, and then click OK to apply your fill effect. And that's it to fill effects. Just click OK when you're done to apply it to your image. Now that we've taken care of the fill color, let's look at what we can do to format lines. So if we select the graphic and once again just go to Format and Picture from the menu bar, or if you prefer you may click the Format Picture button on the Picture toolbar of course. On the Colors and Lines tab of the Format dialog box, underneath the Fill section, notice that we also have a Line section that has the following drop-downs available. First, Color, which allows you to set the color of the line the same way we did with our fill color, and this would be the color of the border we would want for our graphic. Next, you can choose the style, which allows us to select the line style, like single, double, thick. You may also choose a dash style, which allows us to set a dashed or dotted line as the border style, if desired and then set the weight using the spinner arrows up or down to increase or decrease the thickness of the line that will be applied. Now when you've made any changes you want in the Colors and Lines tab, once again, click OK to apply them. Like what you see? Pick up your free copy of the complete tutorial at www.teachucomp.com forward slash free.